Hey guys, we're back once again for another episode of Fooly Cooly February. Uh, just like that, we're right at the end of the series. Just to remind you, this is our last normal episode, and we're going to have one more episode in the series that's going to be a in-review, our final thoughts and overall thoughts on the series. We really thank you so much for all the support you guys have given. Uh, if you told us at the beginning of the series we'd get such a consistent output the way we have and consistent feedback and following that you guys have been giving us we would have never believed it so we really thank you so much for that and it can't be understated enough how much we appreciate you guys one other thing i want to address before we start today is of course the current situation going on in the world uh we just hope you guys are going to stay safe send your prayers out we really don't want uh, to go too deep into it. It's not our place to talk about any of that. Uh, but just stay safe, guys, wherever you are in the world. Hopefully everything calms down in the turbulent times we're in. The sixth and final episode of Fooly Cooly, fittingly called the Climax, came out in Japan on March 16th, 2001, and on Toonami on August 13th, 2003. Haruko and Conti have disappeared and become wanted criminals, while smoke has continued to pour out of the medical mechanica plant since the last robot attack, surrounding the city in mist. Naoto and his friends see Momimi searching for something in the grass, presumably for Takun the cat since he doesn't seem to be with her anymore. It's revealed that he's actually found a love interest within a similarly modeled white cat and they're now running off together, leaving Momimi alone. Unfortunately, Naoto decides to ignore Mamimi entirely since she doesn't seem to be returning his feelings. Mamimi eventually finds a small dog-like robot by the river. It runs away with her cell phone, which she lets it eat, and it grows as a result. Haruko returns to the Nandaba residence at dinner, causing Naoto to later ask her in tears why she left. Amuro and Kitsurubami attempt to find the terminal core of a robot piece that they haul out of the river, which is revealed to be the creature that Mamimi has been feeding various cell phones. It absorbs part of Conti before Haruko feeds Naoto to it, then it merges into the giant hand near the iron. From this, Haruko hopes to extract Atomisk, the celestial being whose power she's been desiring all this time. Before the giant hand can fully grasp the medical mechanical plant, Conti stops it as Naoto emerges from his head, glowing with the infinite energy of Atomisk. Stunned, Haruko flies into a rage, bent on acquiring the power of Atomisk by destroying Naoto. Before he can finish Haruko off, Naoto stops short and declares his love for her, kissing her, and allowing Atomus to fully emerge from his NO channel. Atomus consumes the terminal core and blasts off into space. Before leaving, Haruko asks Nauta if he wants to accompany her on her search for Atomus, but she quickly retracts her offer, reasoning that Nauta is still just a kid. Haruko takes the fused guitars from Nauta and Atomus, presumably keeping it as a memento, and zooms away towards the sky on her Vespa, leaving Nauta to find her guitar lying among the rubble. In the epilogue, life returns to normal on Earth. A year has passed since Haruko's left, and Naoto and his friends have begun their junior high school year. That uniform looks really stupid on you. Yeah, what about you? Here. Uh-oh. Naoto and Nina Mori have a playful little argument over drinks from the vending machine, implying that the cycle is starting anew that he once had with Mamimi. Naoto mentions that Mamimi left in order to pursue photography, and we actually get to see one of her final photos in the city in a magazine. Naoto finishes his final monologue with the same statement made in the first episode that contrasts the events of the series. Nothing interesting ever happens here. Harko's guitar is seen in the corner of Naoto's room, where a single string is mysteriously strummed out of nowhere. And at the very end, Harko is seen flying off into the cosmos. So, the climax, well, is ex like I said, it's exactly that. It's the climax of the series. It really wraps up every th major plot point and plot thread that we have been seeing throughout these five episodes. From now to finally addressing the fact that he might be trying to do something that he isn't, to Haruko's interest in medical mechanica, as well as Eyebrow's interest as well. And we also get to even see what happens with Mamimi and why, um, what she did after ultimately her and Naoto went their separate ways. Something that I really appreciate too about this series, and this episode in particular, is you really get to see resolutions happen in a way where they still leave a lot to interpret and i've never met people who universally agree on what fully cool is about and i think that's part of the beauty of it and the climax does exactly that it just keeps that same mysterious energy that the first five episodes had and while it gives you resolutions these are resolutions that are completely open to interpretation with that being said this episode 
really does a lot of fun things animation wise. I really some of the standout moments, of course, is when they do a callback to their original manga entrance in episode one, and even commentating on it. To of course the iconic fight that happens at the end. And that fight in particular is really important because that is the real self-realization. We get to see it too. Now it's his light bulb literally turning on to what is going on. He's finally realized that he wants to represent himself in his own way instead of having to be something that he isn't. And that's really cool. And instead of trying to grow up too quick, he's realizing he could still be a kid and still want these the things that he wants. Now, as someone who's watched the series multiple times over now, I can safely say that, just like in reality, a lot of the characters in this series have had their ups and downs. They've basically taken two steps forward, one step back throughout the entire series. This is demonstrated firsthand when the teacher of Nauta's class tries to convince everybody to use chopsticks rather than sporks that they've been used to, only to wind up failing herself when she makes an attempt and even cramping her finger. The kids recall their fond memories using plastic utensils just because it was easy for them and it made things more convenient. And as the teacher explains, using chopsticks as a sign of maturity is a chance to test your finger strength and prevent Alzheimer's disease. However, this lesson is unfortunately coming at a time where Nauta is feeling depressed because Haruko has left him. This leads him to actually leave the classroom so he can get some sporks. And it doesn't seem like his friends are too insistent to stop him. At this point, it almost feels like Nauta's become a completely different character than he was at the start of the series, but at the same time, he still retains the same values and personality traits that we originally saw him with. At first, he was initially unimpressed with the adult behavior, especially when his own adult family members started acting so immaturely as soon as Haruko came into the house. And even now, after she's gone, he still can't catch a break when even his own teacher can't demonstrate the lesson that she so sought out to teach him in a successful manner. And even more so on Mamimi's side of things, it doesn't seem like she's really the center of her own universe anymore. Before, she would have been able to take things with a grain of salt, trying to live carefree and happily by taking pictures, hanging out with her cat, and even Nauta on many occasions. However, the significant beings in her life, including Nauta, Takun, and even Conti, have disappeared from her life, leaving her basically helpless and all alone with just her cigarettes. At first, she has some hesitations about approaching a new robot from the river, and even tries to stop it from eating her cell phone, which still has Nauta's brother's phone number on it. But this also marks a big step of maturity for her when she actually allows the robot to eat the phone, thus cutting Nauta's brother out of her life forever. But this doesn't really come without its moments of sadism as well. Deciding that she's had enough of the way she's been treated in this town, she actually uses the robot to her advantage by taking revenge out on the people who wronged her, including having it eat a motorcycle that splashed her earlier. When you're a kid or even a young teenager, you're bound to feel some feelings of rebelliousness. If somebody does you wrong, you naturally want to do something to get them back. It's not every day that you get access to a giant dog-like robot that'll be willing to eat your problems away, so of course Mimi is willing to make use out of this for as long as she can. It's only when the lives of Nauta's friends are in danger that she actually wants to go back on this decision because she can see how it can affect people in addition to just objects. I don't think Mimimi was originally intended to be much associated with Nauta's group of friends, considering that the relationship between those two is inappropriate enough. But in the end, she's still basically their elder and upperclassman. I almost get the feeling that Mimimi feels a sense of responsibility for not only Nauta, but his friends as well. Of course, she was once willing to look out for Nauta when she became so infatuated with him. And I have a feeling that if the rest of the group had warmed up to Mimimi like he did, then she probably would have gotten more responsible and started to look after them as well. Maybe actually curing her depression just a little bit more. But in the end, Nauta and Mimimi ultimately become separated when she decides to leave town to become a photographer. And when we actually get to see the last photo she took of Nauta end up in a printed form, then we can at least decipher that Mimimi has a happy ending. I think it was also a nice touch for Nauta and Nina Mori to have an argument about drinks. This time, Nauta isn't complaining that the drink she chose isn't too sour, but that it's too carbonated. And when you think about it, out of all the relationships that Nauta's been shown to have in this show, a relationship with Nina Mori is the one that gradually makes the most sense. Even looking back on the legal troubles that could come with him pursuing Mimimi or Haruko, Nina Mori actually balances him out pretty well. Nauta once admitted that Nina Mori was very mature for her age and that she's really smart, showing that he does look up to her even though they're in the same grade. Nina Mori went as far as to call Nauta a delinquent at one point. 
yet she wasn't above still hanging out with him because he somehow brought out the fun side in her that she was probably missing from the stigma of being both the class president and the mayor's daughter. If there was one singular character who arguably didn't get a happy ending in this series, it's Haruko herself. Which is actually kind of justifiable because she's arguably the antagonist. Before she came along, things were simple, more balanced. But as soon as she took that first swing, things spiraled out of control. She got so hell-bent and focused on chasing her loved one, or at least his power, not even realizing that she could be hurting a lot of the people surrounding her. And I think it's better for both Haruko and Naota that they didn't end up together in the end. They were both clearly on different paths from the beginning, both literally and figuratively. And that's just how life is sometimes. Not everybody goes on the same path, not even your friends that you made in preschool or middle school. The memories and mementos that you have together will always still be there, but ultimately, you gotta let people go their own way. Of course, Haruko's story uh, is all about her own love interest and her own desires, while also being a very manipulative person, but really one of the biggest growths of Naoto's character is to be able to then recognize that and being able to, like an adult that he's been so desperately trying to be, ultimately accept, forgive, and continue to live his life. And throughout the whole series, Naoto's idea of wanting to be like an adult or being the adult of the series really gets put into the forefront. Because while he finally accepts himself to be a kid, this is the episode where he truly acts the most like what he actually wants to be. There's a level of maturity that, and how he handles things that wasn't there in the first five episodes. And part of that is because Naoto was trying too hard to be an adult. While in actuality, the things that he wanted to do so bad, he could have done naturally. So that storyline was really satisfying. Of course, Mamimi's ultimate obsession with Naota and her refusal to let go obviously manifested into the big final monster of this story. And it was really fun. Uh, really enjoyed everything that happened with her. And of course, the conversation that the teacher had, which the teacher I did not mention any of these reviews. She is a very solid character. She acts kind of like the voice of concern for Naota as she can clearly see that some of the things that are going on in school are worrisome. Additionally, Eyebrows also fits that role, but to a different manner. And Eyebrows' role in this episode is much more as the straight-up, almost villain, as he is truly trying to do everything he can to save humanity, but he's not scared to hurt Naoto or Haruko. And he forces the decision on Naoto of what he believes in. And that is, once again, the defining moment of the show, is once now to figures out what he really wants to do. So before I go into what my favorite Pillow song of the episode was, something I really want to talk about in particular is how strong the music was throughout the entirety of Fooly Cooly. And in this episode in particular, from top to bottom, easily had some of the best songs I've seen in the entirety of an, a single episode. I think this is maybe one of the single strongest song lists ever for... A single episode of an anime. Which made my choice really difficult. While a lot of people are going to immediately dra gravitate towards I Think I Can, as it really hits the true climax of both the episode and the series, other songs including Bringing Back Come Down, One Life was used very well in the episode as well. For me though, I think I have to go to right before the big fight. And that's of course with Little Dinosaur. Well, Dinosaur, it's not its first appearance in, in the first six episodes. However, I feel like its use here is the best, as it's used to be the background music for Eyebrows trying to convince now to, to not fall into what Haruko's ultimate plan is. In between, the part of the song they used, the overall feel, the aesthetic, everything, the significance of that moment in the story, it really caps off what truly is a phenomenal series. And while I have no issue with anyone going with I Think I Can, is it's such a good song, an iconic song, the effectiveness of Last Dinosaur in this episode really sold it for me. Oh my god, he did it again. He just did it again, that bastard. He literally did this on episode 4 too with Crazy Sunshine. Mott likes to do this thing where he likes to claim that everybody will universally pick one song from a particular series and gravitate towards that, thus making my selection of said song seeming like a basic bitch choice. Well, you know what? I'm not going to choose I Think I Can like I originally would, and instead I'm going to go with Funny Bunny. Here's why. 
Funny Bunny really gives off this classic 2000s music rock vibe that really blends well with the gray, dull, blue imagery that happens when Mamimi is all alone smoking her cigarette. Like other songs that came before, this basically acts as the calm before the storm, or at least one of them that happens before the ultimate climax when I Think I Can is eventually followed up by Little Busters in the end. The steady, almost condensed drum beat that, like, sounds like a really choppy, sorta crappy wave file really blends well with the guitar in an unexpected manner, and I can honestly see myself listening to this song alone without the context of the rest of the series because I just think it's a good jam. The fact that all the songs have managed to blend well with the imagery and the scenes that they belong to throughout the series really says a lot about the music stylings and how well integrated that the pillows can be inserted into this series. Like, it's almost like you can't have one without another. You can't have Fooly Cooly without the pillows, and you can't really have the pillows without thinking of Fooly Cooly because they go so hand in hand together, and this track is definitely an example of that. So, guys, that's it. We are just about done with Fooly Cooly February. It's crazy. I can't believe a month has gone by already, but. Here we are. I really can't thank you guys enough, and I really hope that all our future projects and endeavors we get ourselves into, you continue to support as much as you did this series. Don't forget, while this week we only have a single episode coming out, I do have a complete series review that will be coming out in the following week, where me and Sketcher are going to give out our breakdown of the entirety of Fooly Cooly and our final thoughts on the series. Hopefully you guys are excited about that as much as we are, and thank you so much. Don't forget to do check out Skechers YouTube, as well as give our website a look. Like, share, support, any way, shape, or form you can. And we'll see you next time.